title of my message this morning is Changing Your Atmosphere. Changing Your Atmosphere. The Lord put this on my heart the other day, and he said the reason why a lot of times things don't seem to be going right is because we need to change our atmosphere. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that. But before I get into the scripture of that, I just want you to uh, understand that changing your atmosphere and your environment, your, uh, by changing your, your atmosphere, your environment will change. Our natural atmosphere is formed by the air trapped between the Earth's surface and the layers of gases that separate it from space. The atmosphere is con conditioned by the heat from the sun that rises from the Earth after warming it. And if it's too much heat is trapped, it builds up and at the atmosphere becomes overheated. This is commonly known as the greenhouse effect. The overheated atmosphere then affects the environment in much of the same way that the heated air in a greenhouse enables the exotic tropical plants to grow that could not survive in the colder air outside. Think of the environmental changes that would take place if our world became one great big greenhouse and we really did have global climate change. If the atmosphere changed, so too, uh, so too would our present environment and with it our lifestyles. The way we dress, the kind of food we ate, and even the style of houses we, we build would be different. A similar thing takes place when a person in a home or a school or a workplace develops a wrong attitude. When this happens, and you've all experienced this, the atmosphere changes and the environment in the home or the school or the workplace changes along with it. This emotional climate change results in those in the situation either adapting to it and learning to live with it or leaving in the hope of finding the environment they once had somewhere else. A climate change can also take place spiritually. When unbelief enters a person's home or town or as Jesus discovered on a visit to the town of Nazareth where he had grown up and had worked as a carpenter, the strong atmosphere of unbelief in Nazareth prevented Jesus from doing many mighty miracles for the seriously ill that were there. They said, from where did this man get this wisdom and mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas uh, as for his sisters? Are they not all with us? From where then did this man get all these things? But Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Jesus could do few mighty works there because of their unbelief. This was found in Matthew 13, 54 to 58. And Mark writes, he says, he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. Their attitude of unbelief removed faith from the town's atmosphere and left its environment. The antidote, loving and praising Jesus, the Son of God, creates an atmosphere of faith in which we can receive the miracle for our sick bodies needed. An atmosphere of praise and worship brings a spiritual climate change to your home or your work environment. It becomes one of peace, joy, love, and good health. An atmosphere of faith and love that changes home, school, and workplace is climate change we can believe in because Jesus lives. Amen. We're going to talk about the Apostle Paul this morning. Praise God in the book of Acts. Chapter 16. My text this morning is verse 25. You all don't mind if I have my coat off, right? Because I'm hot up here. <coughs> Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for your word. Father, as we share this word, we thank you that the atmosphere is going to change in people's lives. Father, we thank you that deliverance is going to come. 
We thank you that healing is going to come. Because, Lord, your word does not return void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we're going to give you the praise and the honor and the glory this morning. As your Holy Spirit is welcome in this place to challenge, to change, and to help those who are in need today. You're going to meet all of their needs according to your riches and glory. And we thank you for your word that doesn't return void. Lord, open up their hearts, open up their minds. Father, I rebuke any spirit of unbelief, any spirit of doubt. In the name of Jesus, I clear those spirits out of this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Bobby, can you turn this mic down a little bit for me, please? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, everyone say midnight. How many of you have gone through things and experienced things in your life and it felt like it was the midnight hour? You felt like it was the last draw, it was the last time. Midnight came upon you and you felt like you were going to lose everything. You were going to walk away from Jesus. You decided that these problems and these situations are going to overtake you. But I want you to know, hallelujah, that sometimes we give up just before Jesus is about to do something miraculous. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm excited this morning because... And at midnight, hallelujah, at midnight, not when you want it, not when I want it, not when we can expect it, but when God decides he's going to do it, hallelujah. And here at midnight, Paul and Silas did what? They prayed, hallelujah. How many times you pray and you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling? How many times you prayed and feel like God is not listening? See, that's the problem. You feel like God is not listening. But I want you to know that every child of God, God hears the cry of their heart. Now, it doesn't mean that he'll always answer that. But it does mean he does hear your cry. Remember the story of Daniel. Hallelujah. Daniel prayed for 21 days. His prayer went unanswered. And God sent an angel to Daniel and said, Daniel, from the moment you begin to open up your mouth and pray, from that day I've heard you. But there has been a strong uh, influence. There has been a strong uh, stronghold that has been holding me back from coming and answering that prayer. But I want you to know I'm here now and that God has heard your prayer from the very beginning. Hallelujah. So if you feel disheartened like your prayer isn't being answered, you just got to hold on a little longer. Hallelujah. Because your midnight hour is coming. Hallelujah. Did you hear me this morning? Your midnight hour is coming. God is going to do it for you. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas. What caused them to be in this predicament? What caused them to be in this situation? Well, first and foremost, Paul had a vision. Macedonian had a vision of a man coming to him and saying, please come and bring the gospel here. We need you. I'm paraphrasing a little. And it says that Paul wanted to go to an, another city, another place, and it says the Holy Spirit forbid him to go there. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to go and preach the gospel there. But God had another plan for Paul. Hallelujah. God had another uh, accomplishment that he wanted to do through Paul. Not that the gospel was not going to be preached in that area because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But God had another plan. And see, sometimes when we make plans, God has a different plan. 
And so Paul here, he, he says, I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to go to this place. And he goes there and he finds a woman named Lydia there who was a seller of purple and she was in the city of Thyatira and she worshiped God. And she got saved and she got baptized and her whole, whole household. See, because he listened to God, God had salvation planned already. God already had a plan for Lydia. And it was Lydia's appointed time. It was Lydia's midnight. Hallelujah. And now God says, listen, you can go to that other place another time, but I've got something for you to do right now. And it says her household was saved. Not only that, but she opened her home for the apostle to come in and take care of him, feed him, give him a place to, to stay. See how God provides? Hallelujah. At the midnight hour. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. It says in verse 16, And it came to pass as he went to prayer. Notice where he was going. He was going to prayer. Things happen when you pray. Hallelujah. We've got to become a praying people. Hallelujah. If we're a praying people, you'll have results. And so he came to pass as he went to prayer. He found a damsel possessed with a spirit of divination which met, a, which met them, which brought her masters much gain by her soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, Now listen, what she said was true. These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That was true. But the thing about that was, is that she had a distracting spirit. Most people that are into that kind of thing, they want to be noticed. Hello. But she didn't realize it at the time. But something dramatic was going to happen to her. See, because when you go to prayer and you begin to pray, God begins to fuel you up. You begin to get faith. When you begin to praise God and worship God, your faith builds up. When you get to hearing the word of God, your faith gets built up. And this woman was coming with a false spirit, a spirit of divination, a spirit of soothsaying, and she was telling the truth that these are the servants of the Most High God and do show us the way of salvation. It's true. But what she didn't realize was is that her midnight hour was about to come upon her. Can I get a hallelujah? And after a while of hearing that constantly going on in the background, Paul was grieved in the spirit. He turned and he said, hallelujah, I'm going to read it because the word of God is powerful. Hallelujah. And as... She did this many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit. He didn't say it to her. He said it to the Spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers made false accusations and lies against him. Let me tell you something. If your Christianity isn't upsetting the devil, something's wrong. If your Christianity isn't getting the devil a little mad at you, then you better check your Christianity. Here they came. He was in prayer, and he cast the devil out of somebody. And this woman got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, but see, what happens is, is that the, the, uh, the people that were there that were depending on her soothsaying that were making her money because she was selling, getting them to buy idols and the occultic things. When you start to, when you start to disrupt the occultic realm, when you, start to dis when you start to dispel the occultic atmosphere, 
Hello. Devil gets angry. Devil gets mad. Well, I can't believe the pastor preached that today. Like he was talking to me. Well, maybe it wasn't the preacher. Maybe Jesus was talking to you. Hallelujah. So what happened was that all of these uh, people in the marketplace that she brought uh, money to, they made up lies. And what they did was they took these men. How many know that you will suffer for the sake of the gospel? America, we got it light and easy. We've seen several Christians beheaded for their faith. Many Christians got it too easy. They won't stand for Jesus. They're ashamed of Jesus. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father which is in heaven. Don't get mad at me. That's what he said. And it says, after that, they had these accusations against them. They took them out, and they had laid many stripes upon them, and they cast them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. In other words, they beat them. People getting saved. Hallelujah. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And the devil gets mad. Why? Because these men of God were invading the atmosphere. The, the everyday life. That was just going on as usual. But something happened when they prayed, something happened when Paul would listen to the Holy Spirit. He says, I want you to go into this place. God knew that they would be beaten. God knew they would be thrown in jail. And here they are, finding themselves in a prison cell, beaten, whipped, bloody, Hurting. And this was the condition of their midnight. This is what they were facing in their midnight. Back to my text, please. And at midnight... Paul and Silas begin to moan and groan and complain and talk about how bad the people were that beat them, that maybe they should have kept their mouths shut. They're not deserving. This area is not deserving of the gospel. How can they beat a man of God? It's not what it says. When you complain and moan and groan and you begin to have a spirit of unbelief, you are attracting another atmosphere into your situation. When you will not look through the eyes of faith, but through the natural ability to see, through your natural being, you are causing an atmospheric change in your life for the worse. Because the Bible says that if you sow to the flesh, you what? You reap. You will sow unbelief, you will reap unbelief. You sow that in the atmosphere, every demon spirit of unbelief will be attracted to you. If you, have a, if you have fear, every demonic spirit of fear will come upon you. If you have doubt, 
every doubting spirit will come and will talk to you and minister to you and that atmosphere will change and you'll begin to feel hopeless. You'll begin to feel like nothing's going to ever change. That is a spirit. You must change your atmosphere in order to experience victory. Now, let me tell you something. Just because your atmosphere changes doesn't mean you won't go through things. But you will have a different mindset. And you will begin to change the situation and the atmosphere. Say, I don't know if I believe that. Well, the word of God says, a soft answer turneth away man's wrath. You ever do that? Someone real angry, real mad at you? And all you say is, I'm going to pray for you. I love you. You don't respond with, oh, yeah, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You don't feed into that atmosphere. Hello? Am I talking over here or what? You don't. Feed into the atmosphere. You can't always have the last word. That's true. Don't feed into that atmosphere. Don't, f don't feed in hatred. Don't feed in unforgiveness, resentfulness, bitterness, anger. I remember one time I was with somebody. We were in a fish market. And this guy behind the counter, boy, he was swearing four-letter words and he was angry. And my friend and I were driving down. All of a sudden I felt like I was getting angry. That spirit had somehow got a, a hole of my attitude. Probably because I let it. I started to get an attitude. It goes like this. Who does that guy think he is? Hello? I was feeding into that very atmosphere that he was creating. That's why when you turn your television on, watch out what atmosphere you're creating in your home. Atmosphere of unbelief. An atmosphere of sexual temptation. An atmosphere of murder. Hello. Many Christians won't go to bar rooms, but they watch programs on television that have bar rooms coming into the living room. Hello? Your atmosphere needs to change. If you're feeling oppressed, if you're, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like something is pressing you down, that is the atmosphere around you, you need to change that. You need to be able to change that in your attitude. At midnight. I love this. At midnight. Well, they should have been sleeping. They were hurting. They were in pain. They were in prison for something they didn't even do. All the lies of the devil was prevailing over them. But instead of complaining and moaning and groaning and my poor woes, what am I going to do now? I'm in prison. What am I going to do? The gospel's going to suffer. I can't preach the gospel. What's going to happen now? Oh, maybe I just pre-adventured this myself. I should have just kept quiet. Oh, but the devil's really mad now. No. First, it says they prayed. That word prayed in the Greek is a present participle. It means that they continued to pray. They continued 
to pray. They continued to pray. Ever wonder what they prayed? You ever wonder what they prayed? Here they are, they're in jail, they're in prison. Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. And I believe that they were taking those things that Jesus said, God, help us to love our enemies. They were changing the atmosphere from an atmosphere of hatred, lies, to an atmosphere of love. Love your enemies. Lord, we're praying for those who despitefully used us to put us in this position that we're in. God, forgive them. Don't lay this sin upon their charge. Don't charge them with this sin. I could almost infer that's what they were praying. I don't know 100%, but I believe if they were followers of Jesus and Jesus taught them to pray for their enemies and those who despitefully used them, I believe that could have been a part of what they prayed. But then it said something else. It says, and sang praises. They sang praises unto God. They sang praises unto God. And they didn't sing songs like, Lord, let your sword cut their heads off, O God. Let your sword come and thrust them through. They were singing praises to God. What does praise involve? What is praise engulfed in? Praises engulfed in thanks. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't understand everything that we're going through. But I know that nothing can happen to us except that your hand has allowed it to happen. And God, we're in this prison and we're hurting in our bodies. We've been whipped and we've been beaten. We've been lied against. But Father in heaven, we're going to praise you and worship you anyway. Because you deserve the praise. You deserve the worship. I want to tell you, when you begin to worship God, you begin to change the atmosphere because the demon spirits hate praise. They hate it. They'll do everything to try to convince you not to praise. One of the biggest lies the devil tells us is, you don't feel like praising. So because you don't feel like praising, you're not going to praise. Oh, don't praise God. You don't feel like praising God right now. Why should you feel like praising God? Look at what you're going through. Whole family's all sick. What are you going to praise God for? What are you going to praise God for? Your body's aching in pain. What are you going to praise God for? Shut your mouth. Don't praise God. That's what the devil says. But we always seem to be walking in the natural. Oh, please, walk in the spirit. Yes, we're in the natural, but walk in the spirit with your spiritual ears and spiritual eyes. When he said in Revelation, does any man have ears? Let him hear what the spirit says. He wants us to listen to what the spirit says, not what we say or what our situation dictates to us. You've got to change your atmosphere. Ever be in a house where there's disruption, fighting? Arguing, what happens to the atmosphere? What happens to the peace that was there? What happened to the joy that was there? It's overtaken by the atmosphere of something else. How do you get it back? Number one, you pray. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You've gone into your room and you prayed. Then you came out of that room and you saw something change. Why did it change? Because you changed the atmosphere. 
When someone's mean and nasty to you and you treat them with kindness and love, what happens? The atmosphere and attitude changes. You don't let that spirit begin to take over the atmosphere. Look at New Bedford. Last on the list of people that read the Bible. In all of America. Why? Because the devil made us lazy. Devil created an atmosphere. We don't really need to do that. We don't need to get fanatical. Don't need to read our Bible every day. And so what happens? It creates an atmosphere. And the atmosphere is over New Bedford. But that atmosphere, atmosphere is going in Jesus' name. Because this church, we're going to change the atmosphere. We're going to change it by putting aside doubt, unbelief, and fear. And we're going to walk in victory. No matter what the circumstances look on the outside. Why? Because I believe we're at the midnight hour. I believe that Jesus is coming back soon. And we're at the midnight hour. And we need to make a difference. It's not the pastor only. It's all of you making a difference in your life first. See, Paul and Silas, they prayed. And they sang praises unto God. And I love this next part. It says, and the prisoners heard them. It wasn't something like this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. They didn't praise Jesus with headphones on. They prayed and praised the Lord loud enough that all the prisoners heard them. Some of them probably moaning and groaning and complaining about this situation. And now here's two people that are making the difference, that are changing the atmosphere. Paul, oh, you get a hold of this, man. You get a hold of this. Changing the atmosphere. And the prisoners heard them. When you have a midnight hour and when you begin to pray and you begin to sing praises, you're putting that before your doubt and your fear and your unbelief. When that happens, when you set that in motion, in your life. Then the next verse. Comes into play. And suddenly. Suddenly would not have happened. If there wasn't prayer. And praise preceding it. Why? Because the praise and the prayer is what began to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Robobo shata. Oh, I feel the anointing of God. Suddenly. Hallelujah. Well, you know, it's just a natural phenomenon, the earthquake. <laughs> I got news for you. God had to do some shaking up. God knows what he's doing. How come the earthquake didn't happen before? Why didn't it happen when they first were thrown into the jail? Why did it have to happen after the prayer, and the praise. Hmm. I 
I want to encourage each and every one of you. You all got to suddenly come in. Hallelujah. You got to suddenly come in. Sister. You got to suddenly come in, sister. You got to suddenly come in. Suddenly. Cry out to God and say, God, I need a suddenly. You cry out to God and say, God, I need a suddenly. I want you to know when you cry out to God, God, I need a suddenly. He's going to say, I need praise and I need prayer. Prayer and praise is the key that opens up the atmosphere for God to come and answer your prayer and give you a suddenly. A great earthquake. Shaken. Scared Edie out of her chair. She jumped that high. And so there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. The very place that was causing the confinement that was holding on to that atmosphere. Oh, Rabbi Shanda Kirubosha. Was shaken. Bible says, and after a certain amount of time, that's not what it says. It says, immediately. Immediately, all the doors were opened. Hallelujah. All the doors were open. I said it before. The door that God opens, no man can close. Oh, get that in your spirit. The door that God opens, no man can close. And the door that God closes, no man can open. Hallelujah. I don't care how long it takes. You just begin to praise and pray. Pray and praise the Lord and that atmosphere will change because you have a suddenly coming. Hallelujah. All the doors were open. <laughs> and everyone, say everyone, everyone. bands were loosed. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what kind of bonds you have upon you, what kind of uh, uh, shackles you have on you, but I want you to know if you will be determined and pray and praise God and change this atmosphere, God will make your foundation shake and he will open up the door and you will see your bonds, your bands being loosed. Not only that, when you see the atmosphere beginning to change, you got your blessing. Hallelujah. The foundation of the prison shaken. And immediately all the doors opening and all your bands are falling off. You got your blessing. That's not the time to just say thank you Jesus and walk away. Because something else took place. The very ones that kept them captive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very ones that kept them captive came to Paul and Silas and he drew out his sword and he was going to commit suicide. Now, see, we have an attitude like this. 
serves you right, what you sow, you reap. If that's the attitude we have, guess what? We just change the atmosphere back the other way. No, but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, don't harm yourself. Although we could have walked out of this place, we're all here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next verse. Then he called for a light and he sprang in and he came trembling. Ha, hallelujah. Those things that have you, those situations you're facing, all those people that are all attacking you will one day come trembling before you. And it says he fell down before Paul and Silas. Why? Because there was a demonstration of a transformation of the changing of the atmosphere. Now what was conducive to hatred and bitterness and lies and deception permeating that prison. Now the atmosphere was changing. And now they were seeing who their God was. Come on. Now they were seeing who God was. That he's the one that opens up the prison doors, binds up the wounds, heals the brokenhearted. They were beginning to see the atmosphere change. And they came before him and they traveled before Paul and Silas. Next verse. And he brought them out and sir, he brought them out of the prison, out, out, outside of the jail. They, they were experiencing freedom now. And they didn't just walk out and say, I am free to dance. I am free to dance. No, they didn't just go happy, happy on their way. What happened was when the atmosphere changed, the jailer who was once telling them to shut up and sit down and get in that prison cell and lock in that door, doing his job, now comes trembling before them and bowing down at them and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Hallelujah. God doesn't want to just change your atmosphere just for the changing for your benefit he wants you to take that atmospheric change and take what he's done for you and go testify and share it with others of what God has done that through the circumstances you could have been a complainer a moaner a groaner you could have been someone in there saying well, uh, oh I'll tell you I hate this guy or I hate that situation or I hate this person I work with or oh, this person really got me upset and I, I'm never going to forgive them and so they're adding to that atmosphere they changed it and by changing it God began to move I'm telling you right now God's going to move New Bedford ain't going to be the same we're not putting up with it if we can get some people to pray and to praise God Stop complaining about dead New England, dead, dead New Bedford. Nothing ever good comes out of New Bedford. Come on. Ain't nothing to do. It dries up at 9 o'clock at night. Everything closes. Ain't nothing to do. Nowhere to go. Stop complaining. Stop praying and praising. Stop. Take a walk. If you like to walk, walk around the neighborhood and say, God, I'm praying, Lord, every soul of every house that's here gets saved. Lord, I pray for their salvation. Lord, I pray that you would move by your spirit. Father, I praise you and thank you that you're going to hear this prayer and you're going to answer this prayer. Lord, move in New Bedford. What are we looking at? The news? WBSM? New Bedford's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. All the drugs and the alcoholics and the homeless and all of the things that are going on and the murder and the riots and the, you know, the uh, gangs and all that stuff. Going on in New Bedford, breaking in, stealing tires, doing all kinds of things. Stop feeding that atmosphere. Yes, that's the reality of what's going on, but you don't need to feed into it. 
Say, well, how is that scriptural, pastor? The Bible says where sin abounds, God's grace does much more abound. We need to start talking about God's grace. We need to go out there with God's grace and begin to show them that there's a difference and that they can make a difference in their atmosphere. They got to change their position. Change their attitude. Next verse. And they said unto him, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Isn't that wonderful that salvation is a gift of God? It is freely by his grace. We don't believe like the Catholics believe. Baptism saves. That's a Catholic doctrine. Baptism is necessary in obedience to Christ, but it does not count for your salvation at all. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the thief on the cross was not baptized, and Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. So if salvation is with baptism, that thief would not have made it. Hello. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And what else? And thy house. Now watch this. I want to show you how you, some people allow demonic manifestation in their homes. You have video games? Hello? Some of the most demonic Got any Disney tapes with witchcraft and enchantments? Hello? Oh, you can laugh at me all you want. You can make faces all you want to. I'm telling you the truth. Watch all these things with spiritual witchcraft and cauldrons and all that stuff. Oh, you put that in your house, you are changing the atmosphere. You go into a Jewish home. What's the first thing you, you what's the first thing you encounter when you walk at the door of a Jewish home? Right on the right side you see a mezuzah. What's in that mezuzah? The word of God. Hello? That house is dedicated to the to the Lord. Come on now. These things will feed into the atmosphere of your life. Don't think for one moment that Disney does not plan the satanic, demonic attack upon your family. It's all planned. Oh, and it's done in a cartoon format, so guess what? It makes it acceptable. Makes it okay. No, it's not okay. Because if the devil can get your children, he's got the next generation. Hello? But he tells him, he says, listen, you do this, your whole house is going to be saved. And the next verse says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spoke unto him, the word of the Lord. And to all that were in his house. And he took them. Notice plural. He took them the same hour of the night. Midnight. He wasn't some of these lazy Christians said, Yeah, you know what? I'm kind of sore from getting beat up and everything, you know, and it's nighttime. Why don't we, why don't we do this another day? No. He took them the same hour of the night. He washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them. Hallelujah. When the, when the atmosphere changed, your provisions will be provided. His meat was brought before them and rejoiced Believing in God with all his house. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Jen, God just spoke to my spirit. You got a suddenly coming that's going to change the atmosphere in your home. You got a suddenly coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just keep praising. You just keep praying. Hallelujah. There's some, there's some spirits flying around in your home that you can't control. But you know what? You can pray them and praise them away. And watch the atmosphere change. You respond in love. Watch the atmosphere change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say with me, slip up your hand and say, God, I, would, I need you to change my atmosphere. I need an atmospheric change. I need God a new a new revelation. I need something that will help me in my attitude, Lord, to change so that I don't keep feeding that atmosphere. I don't become an enabler by allowing that that atmosphere to continue in my life. God, I want to change the atmosphere. God, I want to I want to suddenly to happen. God, I know that if you did it for Paul and Silas, you'll do it for me. God, because you're not a respecter of persons. God, I need you. I need you to come suddenly. But that's only going to come, and, in, and it's only going to be activated in our lives when we begin to pray and we begin to praise. Hallelujah. Can someone say, God, hallelujah, help me to pray and to praise Hallelujah. Come on, cry out to the Lord right now. Say, God, come on, pray with all your heart right now. Say, God, help me to pray. Help me, Lord, to pray for those who despitefully use me. Help me, God, to pray for my enemies. God, help me to love my enemies. God, help me to stop complaining and moaning and groaning. God, help me to keep stop talking about it, Lord, with others. God, about the negativity that's going on. God, help me, Lord, to be more positive in the things of prayer and praise. And, Lord, in worshiping you and and, and and seeking your face, God. Hallelujah. God, help me to change the atmosphere. Help me, God, to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. 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 I want you, if you, if you, I, I want you to, for a moment, if you're sick and tired of seeing the defeat in your home, in your life, and you want the atmosphere to change, I want you to stand. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. See, I believe that God gave me this message. Changing the atmosphere, like I read earlier, is trying to change where you are. You don't need to change where you are. You need to allow where you are to be changed hallelujah hallelujah from this side from this side first I want you to come this side first I want you to come come in a single file right here stay to, stay to this side so when people leave they can go right up there stay to your left stay to your left single files single files stay to your left when I'm, I'm going to pray for you that your atmosphere is going to change your atmosphere will change when your heart changes. Amen? When your heart changes, you will see it. When you begin to praise and, and when you begin to pray, God's going to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray in agreement that your, your atmosphere begins to change in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, change her atmosphere. Give her the strength, Lord. I bind all doubt, fear, and unbelief in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I come against all, every spirit of doubt and fear in the name of Jesus. Satan desires to sift you as wheat, my dear. 
But Jesus said, I'm praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. The Holy Ghost is praying for you. We're praying for you. There's some changes you need to make. Some decisions you need to make. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, No man putting his hand to the plow looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There's nothing you're missing from the past. Nothing. That's a lie from the pit of the, the devil. Because you got everything to look forward to. In the atmosphere that God has for you, sister, I'm going to tell you something right now. In the atmosphere that God has for you in that place that he has for you, your husband is there. Everything you need is there. Your ministry is there. Everything is waiting for you there. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you that it's somewhere else. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. 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 This word is going to go deep into your heart, honey. Hallelujah. Deep into your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know that Barney does not control the atmosphere. You do. All the powers of the occult are subject unto the Lord. That witch that works with you is not setting the atmosphere. You are setting the atmosphere. You're going to go in there with a new, a new anointing, a new boldness. You're going to go in there with a new determination. You're going to pray over those desks. You're going to pray over those rooms. You're going to change the atmosphere with prayer and praise. When you're there 10 minutes early, you're going to go into all the rooms and begin to pray. And you're going to see the atmosphere change. You're going to see people's continences change that go in there looking for a job you're going to see their attitudes change in the name of Jesus not only there at work but at home in the name of Jesus we spoke the world into existence hallelujah breathe the breath of life into man you've already begun to change atmospheres 